I consider myself a big fan of shifting alliances and betrayals, backstabbing, and just all around excellent board play. In a game like Pax Premier, one moment you might be throwing your allegiance behind the mighty Russians, the next, maybe the Brits, or perhaps you're a fan of the people. And so, as it goes, PAX Premier is probably my favorite game of 2019, and it is a hallmark of brilliant design from Cole Worley. And today, I'm going to teach you how to play it in 10 minutes or less. So what do you need to know about winning in PAX Premier? Well, victory points rule the day. How do you get those victory points? Well, in PAX Premier, you need to get comfortable with the number four. Scoring rounds occur when one of the four dominance check cards enter the market. Oh boy! When one of those cards enters into the market, there's almost a state of panic from all the players as they assess the board state. This is the most important concept and why I am leading off with this in my teach. If you can understand what the board state is, then you're about 90% of the way towards figuring out PAX Premier. Ah, now we're back to the number four again. You can see here that the Afghan Coalition, or the green color, has four more pieces out on the board than any of the others. That means that faction is dominant. Ah, it looks like somebody decided to put one of the Britain pieces out. Now, the green faction, the Afghan Coalition, is no longer dominant. Dominant. Not dominant. Let's take a close look at the dominant victory conditions. So, here we go. We have a dominant coalition, and if somebody decides to pick up that aforementioned dominance check card, only a couple things are going to matter in regards to scoring. First, you need to have your loyalty wheel turned toward the dominant faction. Then, you're going to count up all of your patriots, so cards with the stripe of that color in the very middle, all of the gifts, that you have given to that coalition. And finally, all the cards that you've taken as a prize that have this little stripe at the top. Let's go ahead and say that somebody decided that they don't want the Afghan coalition to be dominant. So, everything I just showed you goes out the window, and now we only count whoever has the highest number of their discs off their player board. So if you had three that are being used for other purposes, when the dominance check is resolved, you had to have three total points towards that scoring round. So, whoever has the highest number of discs off is going to get the maximum amount of points. First place gets three, second place gets one. Speaking of your player discs, these guys are going to be wearing a lot of different hats. And I mean a lot of different hats. Okay, so you know the why, now on to the how. So on your turn, you have two basic actions. You can purchase a card, or you can play a card. Purchasing a card is simple. See the cost at the top? That is how much each card is going to cost you in rupees. So let's say, for instance, you wanted the two card. You would just go one, two, and then take the card with the rupees on top. Note, any card that you place a rupee on top of you would be ineligible to purchase on that turn. Here's where things can get a little fun, interesting, whatever you want to call it. Notice that I have an Afghan Patriot. I'm loyal to the Afghan Coalition. I have a gift and a prize. I just purchased this card from the market, a Russian card. Now, if I end up playing that to my tableau, they're not going to like that too much. The moment I play this to my tableau, got to get rid of him, my gift, my prize, and spin the wheel. Hey, that was pretty good. So, there are certainly repercussions for what cards you decide to play in your tableau. Note that tableaus are going to be fixed in place once you place them. You can place cards to the left or right of your tableau. But in general, your tableau is going to stay fixed. The reason for that being, spies, once on your cards, are actually going to move counterclockwise or clockwise 
across all the player's boards should someone choose to move their spy. Note that your default court size is going to be three, aka the amount of cards that you can have in your tableau, and the amount of cards that you can have in your hand is two. However, see how I have a two star Intel card there in my tableau? For every star that you have, it increases whatever rank that you have for your privilege. So with that two star for the hand size, I can now go from two in my hand to four in my hand. Speaking of those suits, this is going to be the marker for this favorite suit. Starting, it's going to be the political suit, but any time that you play a card that has a little indicator like this, it's going to change the favorite suit. So in this case, if I play that to my tableau, it's going to change to the Intel suit. When playing a card to your tableau, you immediately get to carry out the top right impact actions. In this case, you would get to put two spies down on any card in Transcaspia. See here? I have a Transcaspia card, my opponent does, so therefore I could put both here, here, or one of each. Other impact icons can also involve putting down armies. So an army is anything that is upright, or you can put down a road. So instead of putting this upright, you could place this on a border of the region that the card is. Now once a card is played into your tableau, you can no longer use the impact actions in the top right. However, as one of your two actions, you can actually use your card-based actions on the bottom. For example, I have the betray action on one of my cards in my tableau. I have a spy on someone else's card. If I wanted to take out that card using the betray action, I would pay two rupees to the right side of the bank, and then I would remove that card from the board and put that spy back on my player board. Remember how I had mentioned that you can have gifts on your little dial? This action here allows you to pay this cost of two, four, or six, depending on what rank you are. So here, pay two to the market, and there you have a gift on your dial that can count toward the dominance check. Just a side note, whatever the favored suit is allows you to perform one free card-based action on a card that has the matching suit. So for instance, if this was on your tableau and the favored suit is Intel, you'd be able to perform one of these actions on your card for free without using any of your two basic actions. Dominance checks are only initiated once a player purchases that dominance check card. So somebody would have to pay five rupees if they wanted to activate this dominance check card. However, sometimes conditions aren't particularly ripe and nobody chooses to purchase that dominance check card and it starts to slide down. However, remember, there are four dominance check cards in this deck and one can come up and immediately trigger a dominance check. So when two appear on the board at one time, a dominance check is immediately initiated. And so at the end of your turn, after you're done with your two actions, just be sure to refill the card market. Slide all the cards down, and these were from the draw deck, and it's the next player's turn. I had mentioned the number four. One thing to keep in mind is after a dominance check, if any one player is at least four or more ahead of the other players in scoring points, the game is over immediately and that player will be declared the victor. I'm likely not going to have enough time to go over all of the impact icons and all of the card-based actions. So, go ahead and take a screenshot of this or pause the video if you need to study any of these other actions. If no one's able to get the four point advantage, play will continue until all four dominance check cards appear and are purchased. One thing to note on the last dominance check, points are doubled. There's just a couple edge case rules that I probably won't have time to go over, but I did want to cover the concept of ruling a region. So, in this instance, both the red and the blue player have one piece here each, and therefore don't rule the region. To rule a region, you must have at least one tribe and a plurality of pieces. We can see here that the blue player is allied to the Afghan region. So, if they put down one or more Afghan blocks, then they would become the ruler of the region. Anybody that wants to play a card in Herat is going to have to pay the blue player one rupee for every tribe that they have here. Now let's say, for instance, that the red player, allied to the Russian faction, 
goes ahead and matches them here. Now, the blue player is no longer dominant or ruling of that region, and they have to put this piece back to notate that nobody rules that region. Finally, I want to talk about the overthrow rule. We're going to abstract this just a little bit. Let's say that this, this is in the blue player's tableau, and the blue player is the ruler of Persia. See here, they have a plurality of pieces here. However, if the red player with a spy on that Persia card decides to betray that card and removes it from the board, then you also have to remove your tribe that's connected to it from Persia, and vice versa. If for whatever reason, the tribe here on Persia gets removed from the board, you will also have to remove the card that is connected to it. Okay, so there you have it. Um, that is Pax Premier from Cole Worley. Again, my favorite game of 2019, and I'm sure a lot of you are looking forward to the reprint coming in 2020. If you're looking for something a little more comprehensive, check out the video from Heavy Cardboard that featured the game's designer. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Go ahead and uh, like or subscribe if you enjoyed this, and uh, I look forward to putting out more of this kind of content.